Okay, I'll call the meeting to order at five o'clock or five o three in Eastern Standard Time. Time for Joyce. <laughs> First item is to approve the minutes from March. I move we approve the minutes. Second. Motion made. Second to approve the minutes from March 11th. I'll do a roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Susan? Aye. Brenda? Aye. And myself? Aye. Next item is to review and discuss the proposed draft personnel policies and comments from department heads. And the first question I'll ask, did we get any department head comments? Just from library. Just from library. Okay. And the ones Lynn had said. Yes, yes. During that Which period. we more or less, I think should we not, or did I, maybe I think if I went through it. Did no, we did that. Yeah, yeah, we went through them. There were a few right. things that yeah. they just back from others, kind of, right. I think is what. I have some Okay. Um, then I guess we'll just open it up to the floor here for comments on the different sections. Okay, mine, I think my first comment is a general comment. We have the sole, we refer to the select board and we refer to the appointing our father. Do we have them in the right places? You know, they, first of all, we never define appointing authority. And is it possible to take a look at it when we say select board? Is it truly the select board or should it be appointed authority? I don't think it's a risk the other way. But there's a bunch of select boards and I did not go through it to try and figure it out because I'm not sure I'm the best person to do that. But can we define pointing authority and make sure we're referencing the right answer? I would define the appointing authority as the elected officials that oversee that specific department, mm -hmm. something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately it's elected officials, whether it be select board. Water commissioners or library trustees. Am I missing anything? I think those are the only three elected. Um, assessor. I think I said that, didn't I? Assessors, water department, water commissioners, and select board. Three. And library. Oh, library. So, we have, so we have four elected departments that oversee employees. Another another aspect of this that Brian had made comment from day one was that we need to get, other than the select board, we need those other three departments to agree to follow these personnel policies, or either that or if they're not, then they've got no personnel policy. They have to come up with their own mm -hmm. of some sort. Right. And and they can't just pick and choose. Well, we like this idea, so we're going to agree with you here, but disagree with you here. It's either yes or no. That's the way I see it. Agreed. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. It, it so is how, such a way too comprehensive policy <laughs> to give to the library. Like you're giving, this, but yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, you either have to agree or, but then they have. They can't just make up their own policy out of whole cloth. It's got to run by the town, I think. Well, I guess the Brian's point was that they don't have to. They could have their own damn personnel policy, but that's going to be <laughs> really hard. And I don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, and uh, especially if we've got it written such that in the appropriate places, it says the appointing board or the you know, the appointing authority. Um, so it's clear that it's inclusive of them right now, um, and just let's see if we just approach them and say, hey, we think it'd be great if you would adopt this personnel policy. We understand that you're in charge of hiring, firing your own employees, but we think you should have a personnel policy. We made this. I think it includes you, and then I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think they'll just 
say fine. So who brings it to them? Who has that conversation? I think a, a, an interim co-town administrator should do that. <laughs> Did you say the word interim? Uh -huh. So um, a couple things. Um, this, and I hate this word, but they really can't parse what you do as a committee, all right? So you can't spend a year and a half doing these bylaws to treat all employees uniformly and equitably, and they say no, but take the COLAs you've been recommending for the last upteen years and all the other good things that you recommend for employees and then turn around and say, yeah, we're not going to follow the bylaws. So, um, so you know, that's the way you sort of say- This is a well, policy though, not a bylaw, right? Right, but you you recommend what the COLA is. That's not a bylaw, right? It's not a bylaw, but right. it's an internal policy that if push comes to shove, will be held to in a court of law. If we don't, by we, I mean the town of Whaley, if we don't follow it. That's why it's like important that people understand what they're agreeing to follow and why this is too bad. But we're down the road. It's not terrible. A lot of it's reciting what's already the law. So that's okay. We can live with that. But also everyone just has to understand. I, I'm such a broken record on this. I'm annoying myself. But um, yeah, I don't think we can say to the library and water, Here, here's our you know, handbook for the employees of the town, but carve out your own. I just don't think that you can do yeah. that. I don't think we should. I think we should. Sorry if I'm yeah. yeah. It, it, it may be that, that we don't have the authority to tell them they have to, but I think they are sensible people and they will. Yeah, we can just say it's our expectation after two years or whatever years of work. And, you know, your, this committee is created by town meeting? By yes, it was yeah. created by town meeting. Yeah, then I would argue to Brenda's point that you have the force to, you know, probably. Yeah, they should just see it and say, what don't you agree with? We understand this is very unwieldy and long. However, we've hired professionals, they've written this, the law has gotten more complicated, life has gotten more complicated. Please read it and tell us if you can't live with any of these or if they don't actually match to what you're doing in your field. Ultimately, this applies to all town employees, regardless of who the appointing authority is. Except for the school. No. Except, right. Yeah. Right. And don't have it as a police No. No. So, no. Okay. Okay. So, aside, yeah, aside from the school. But I think that's a key thing to make clear to them that we're not usurping their power, we are, uh, you know, applying this to all employees. And we're rewriting it and ask, updating it and asking right. for your yes. input. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and really to much. Joyce's point, we don't, you know, Joyce doesn't think there will be an issue, so I think. I don't either, but I'm just making sure that I think maybe some, some type of request needs to go out so that their upcoming meeting, when whenever we're feeling like we've prepared that final draft and we're ready for exception acceptance then we need to have each of those departments sign off at one of their open meetings that they agreed to accept and follow it and they're satisfied simple as that okay should we move on to my next point sure <laughs> <laughs> on page 19 we say that we are recommending COLA salaries, I forget what the third one was, to the Finance Committee. We're presenting recommendations to the Finance Committee by March 1st. For as long as I have been on this committee, we have never been close to March 1st. What is a realistic date? Is there a re more realistic date that gives the Finance Committee enough time. Honestly, my concern is if we don't meet our deadline, they can not take what we said into consideration. So what is the best deadline that we should strive for? Like for COLAs, we don't have the information that much. Or even for 
salaries because we need his information. I almost would feel that it should somehow be tied to the time of town meeting. There was a time where town meeting was in like the third week of April. So that if if our if we go back to something like the third week of April, our timeline of presenting it needs to be way earlier than it does this year, where it's June, whatever. It's so so could we say six weeks, eight weeks, whatever the number prior is to prior to scheduled town meeting? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Because it sometimes takes a little while to convince the finance committee of what to recommend on COLA. So, right. Doesn't that happen at the first meeting or sometimes the second meeting, sometimes the third meeting. So, yeah, that, like six weeks before, not, let, I mean, even that's cutting it, but yeah, does six that. Weeks before it's yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would love to have it now. I mean, to be honest, even though town yeah. meeting's not until June, because we're still trying to figure out what our budget gap is. Um, Is the six weeks is too tight? Eight week? Oh no, I'm, I'm I all mean, for it, waiting. Like I said, it's yeah. hard to get it through. Yeah, if we said eight weeks on a norm on some years. If we were back in, in an April town meeting, we would have already had to submit that. Right. So yeah. and we're often in the we're looking for data to base the colas on and it's good to have like at least january and february cpi numbers uh to help with that uh decision so mm, do we have to specify a date in there we probably should Trisha's ready to say, yeah, shake her I would, I mean, I was thinking, I mean, lack of specificity probably helps you. I would say something like in advance of town meeting or each spring. Or, or just leave it I mean, totally. Firm deadlines are meant to be not met in bylaws and policies. <laughs> okay. That's in my experience. Okay. <laughs> What's the harm in taking it out? I, I, well, I mean, could they, could then the finance committee said, well, you didn't tell us by February 1st, so we're. Yeah, it can just say, shall we present not to that the finance and select board? I don't have enough history to know that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just making a bet as advocate here. I don't know what the. Yeah, I don't, let's not put, let's not put let's one not in. Put a date because, in. because of the moving date of the town the meeting is metrics fine. that we need right. to look at and the date of town meeting. Which right. It's a key good and good point. Okay. We never know when town meeting is going to be. Fine. Okay. Um, on page 23, we reference informal compensation. Do we need to define it or set parameters for it? If it's easy when you're citing, because my pages print differently, if you can just tell me section. And... Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah, it's mine doesn't look like you're yeah. right. Sorry. <laughs> and then, like article or section. Find it. Yeah. Hold on. Number four, I'm going to figure out how to What is the subtitle? There's a lot of weird stuff in this. Okay, section three compensation. One of a bunch of. Okay, yeah, I'm looking there. Yeah, so I'm off by six pages. That's helpful. Okay. okay. Section three. 
Yeah, I'm not going to keep doing this, I promise. That's okay. I, I don't have that many that reference a specific way. Section C E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've added under authorization, probably where the department heads are responsible for the patrol authorization, but we're talking compensatory time and informal compensatory time. But we never say what is normal because we'll qualify for it. Yes. Down in section four. Yeah, that that's where I'm where I first saw this. Oh, what exactly, and this was my own ignorance, what exactly is it? What do we mean by that? Informal compensation? Informal compensatory. It is granted to, let me see if I get this right, non, to exempt employees, such as salaried employees, Whereas it's a it's an obligation to like an hourly employee, where if an hourly employee works over forty hours, so this this was put into effect. For instance, if um, the town clerk was on a salary all of a sudden, or a lot of times it's been in the town administrator's line item, where all of a sudden the town administrator is absent like right now and we're an interim and someone else in the department or in the town has to pick up the slack mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's working a lot more hours but there's not they're not being paid for it that would be informal compensation should we put that with this i thought it was pretty <laughs> I think it is, and if you look at three above, it's sort of defined okay. non exempt versus exempt. So I think it is a number three versus the Fair Labor Standards Act. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's, I think, it is very possible that I missed this. I just wanted to make sure. Again, we define them, but do we ever say that informal informal story applies to the exempt? It's it's in the title on four. It says it, it, only exempt employees are in. True. True. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe so that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Then two just little ones. At some point, we should fix the fact that there is no appendix B when we label everything. And there is a note on the social media policy saying, yeah, we need to look into this. Section is is on the Section B forty seven. Okay. Section B of seven, seven yeah. computer technology internet which is, Yeah, for me it's page forty seven. We have no idea. What is it for anybody else? So I don't know. If we're talking about yeah, finalizing the document, we don't have this yet. But <clears throat> it just he says additional research is needed to simplify this policy. And what's here came from the consultant. I didn't pitch that what? 
this what's written here came from the consultant. Right. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. It's like a boilerplate, so yes. it's a media policy, which doesn't really fit. But yeah, we just didn't. I remember we had we all issues with us. Were we going to ask other towns for yeah. what they did for that? Yeah, this was talked about early on, and it seems that yeah. sounds familiar to what I have to recall. Yeah, I think that I could be remembering incorrectly, but I mean, didn't we at some point say we don't need an IT policy because we don't have it? It's not that we don't need it, but we don't have an IT. Maybe on the IT department. And that was changed. I looked for that. I think Brian might have fixed that because that was yeah. partly him saying that. I remember correctly. Yeah. But I oh, five pages of hand holding and please. Just to so. Yeah. Maybe. This is hard. I, if I uh, remember correctly, I believe that was something that. You agreed that the next town administrator would focus on. Yeah, I think that's right. Yes. That we just said, let's just delete the whole thing. Right. 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 The law yeah. is the law on appropriate right. use. You can't get around that. Yeah, I, yeah. So I thought that came out, but mm -hmm. so should we just take it out? So that? I would argue that this is probably not the best policy, but that you most certainly need. A technology policy that's probably the number one reason employees are dismissed or disciplined right now for inappropriate use of town resources. I don't think we were going to take it out. I think we were going to, you guys were going to leave it as is and then, um, and I can't revisit it. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and focus when, when we get another the permanent town administrator. Um, I do uh remember about the security, the cyber. Um, something about Maya, and they might have um, something that we need to uh, go by for uh, cybersecurity, um, that they might have something for us um, in terms of that for more um, security with our technology. Um, I just can't remember right now everything, but I do know that was something that you guys discussed to push onto another place. Mm -hmm. So. For the time being, can we just flag this section as you know, still in the works? And because I don't know that this is going to be a deal breaker for the other appointing authorities and get them working on everything else and have them understand we are still trying and we're waiting for the new yeah. town administrator. This needs effort, but not hold anything up. Because Trisha is absolutely correct. You need some type of IT policy in place, especially with security, cybersecurity, um, whether it's lock your computer every time you leave or something like that. I think that is very important. Okay. I mean, in the alternative, I could contact some other towns and get mm -hmm. something less <laughs> onerous. <laughs> well, it's both onerous and like mamby pamby, nothing there. We understand, we that but it's important to use yeah. social media. I mean, that's not an employer policy. That's a cut to the chase. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would say, even if a way, if we can't analyze it to the other time in this video, let's do the homework. If we get that, and then if we can come across them, if we can drop something. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. there a time to yeah. have anything that's done since I'm so new to this? I don't think I've ever heard that. Sure. Where we have a new town administrator, it would be nice, but almost impossible. It'd be nice to have the new town administrator. <laughs> I mean, it's not something that needs to be done like for town meeting. It's not being voted at a town meeting, so it's it's whenever we get ready and feel it's to be presented to the full select board for their acceptance. Well, so I could ask a lawyer I used to work with, Bob Leonard, you know Bob Leonard from your days, which I've asked him stuff since I've been on Waitley because he represents, he does like HR 
well, more employee stuff. But anyway, he sent me stuff to look at. I can just ask him, do you have something? And you, I would say you do the same. Your resources are probably way better than mine. Yeah, I can just go but I just don't think this stuff. one is the ideal one to use. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. It seems yeah. awfully long, and this is a small font. But I also agree with both of you guys. Yeah, you can't just take it out and, and then let it fall off the radar entirely. Um, I'm looking at the minutes of the prior meeting from February 26, where we referenced the IT policy. Um, and basically what I just said, the committee agreed to involve the Town Administrator in addressing IT policy concerns and updating existing policies so that we can have the evolving standard. Um, the committee discussed issues surrounding the absence of the IT team and the importance of access control and password protection systems. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, that was it for my. I had a couple of things that I had noticed. And one of the things was in under the compensation section, section K or 3K, the break periods. I can't, I wanted to revisit that to discuss how we left that because at one point it says the town permits employees to take two paid 10 minute breaks. And I know the state law says a 30 minute lunch break as long as you, an employee works longer than a six hour shift. Um, I, I don't know how, as long as it's offered, that's my question. If it's offered, is it mandated? It seems like it used to be years ago, you had to have a 15 minute break. Now I don't see anywhere that's law referencing a 15 minute break. Yeah, somebody's working all day. Two 10 minute breaks is not the one time. But... Where the law, well, definitely the law, current law says that you have to provide, you have to be provided a 30 minute lunch break if you work longer than six hours. But I, I don't see, I didn't see anywhere in there that says they have to accept that. They have to, they can't be denied it if someone says I want. You mean if they want to work through and not have a paid break so they can leave after five and a half hours? No, well, if their lunch, the lunch does not have to be. I don't think by when I read the law, you have to. You can work through your lunch. Same thing with someone here in this department in the in the town office. They can they can work and eat at their desk while they're working. It's not like they have to go sit in the break room for 30 minutes and not be able to do any work. But if such employee says, I want a 30 minute lunch and they want to go off to leave for a half an hour, that's, we can't, I, they have to be provided that. Isn't that covered in your But the 10 minute break yeah. is in addition to a 30 minute meal break now. Uh, might be, yeah. Reading through this though, I'm not clear right. on is it optional. All right, well, possible? all right, yeah, it is there. But it's, and again, it says at least in eight hours, the state law says six. Okay. Is that what the law is? They have to have, are they obligated to take it? And they work through their meeting of lunch hour. I'm just looking at mm -hmm. again a lot of this is for the hourly wage employees, salary employees, which most folks in this building are. Um, it's mostly so that the hourly wage employees don't get work. I mean, you know what it's like when you're snow Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, it's 
even in this other section where it says meal periods are not considered working hours while if you're choosing to, to eat while you're sitting at your computer, you should be able to, in my mind, work and get paid. So this is really harkens back to when people smoke. So if you have employees that still smoke, yeah. that's where the entitlement to a break is twice a day. Okay. So they get a 10 minute break to smoke in addition ostensibly to a lunch hour. All right. So that's sort of the genesis for that. We just don't think in those terms now because mm -hmm. so few people few people smoke. But that's that's really what it's about. Right, because I know it goes on in the next part, it goes on to, to you know, nursing and mothers and lactation and patients and all that stuff. So, which is case by case scenario as, as needed. I guess I'm confused. So, aside from ranging it from eight hours to six hours, if that's the law, what are we going to do to this? I just question and do we need. Should it still say employees are permitted to have two 10 minute breaks during the work day? Then that we'll just that's part of what I, I question. So let's think this through when you hire a new laborer and they smoke, then you can say to them, You're they can't smoke on the job, they can't smoke on a site. But they're entitled to two 10 minute breaks a day to go and have a cigarette. I'm just sort of playing that. Yeah, okay. So, in the absence of that, then what happens? Two. Make a deep gun. I mean, I should leave it in. I think we should leave it in. But again, yeah. That you know the question was yeah, raised okay. by, I think it was an interesting, a good question yeah. raised. Yeah. All right, then leave it. Is yeah. the only thing I would then say is to change that eight hours to six for the meal. For the meal. Yeah. And then the other thing, which was just prior to that, in section F of callback pay, um, I remember discussing it in the, um, like with the police department, uh, when they have, um, like their details and stuff, they have a four hour call in, four hour minimum. And I was just wondering if it would make sense to have everything uniform. Instead of three hours before hours. I know the state law requires three, but I'm questioning in regards to the, you know, when an hourly employee gets called in on holidays and things like that. Uh, most of the time, it always entails a good three hours, anyways, but. Um, there are a few instances where an employee might get called in for a tree down where it may not take that long. But at the same point in time, they're having to give up what they're doing to come in to do it. Um, and like I said, the one thing that I do know is the police I'm department. Not, yeah. The police department I'm not sure has, I see the parallel to the police department because those are scheduled ahead of time. They're not being called in um, during a non-scheduled work time. They're agreeing in advance to, and then, the, and those are all, they're all very scheduled. This looks like, uh, I think section F is about things that are not scheduled, things that come up suddenly. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I, I, I don't agree that there's a, a, an equivalence there, something where, where we ought to have them be the same. Um, that's just, that's all I want to say. Okay. 
those are that's the only comments I had. Anyone else other than trying to remind the other department heads, what did we get from the library? I didn't collect your materials. Is it there? Yes. Yeah, they're they're up there. I can grab that. No, I printed it. I didn't know. I didn't know I was looking. No, I plugged it there for you guys. Okay, so you've already you've answered Trisha, you've answered the I did ten minute break question. Um <coughs> you travel for a workshop. Workshop or conference are we eligible for travel? We got that in there. Yeah. Okay, that the the way I look at it, I mean that that's that's gonna be a budgetary that's between the the library commissioners. It doesn't affect them. Well, she's the somebody the, that works more than five hours. No, but the question about going to a conference, are we eligible for travel expenses? Yeah. That's going to be based on whether the trustees say, we'll, we'll pay you to go do it. Or right. What's the past practice? If you're allowed to go to a conference, you should be getting, on town town, you should be getting reimbursed for mileage. I, I'm yeah. not disagreeing. I'm just saying it. That seems to be more of a department. That's between them. They would have to have money in their budget to pay for that. Professional development employees attending workshops and professional conferences. No, it says is recognized. It says we're not a company. But the select board is being in the best interest of the town. Attendance to at such workshops and conferences by the employee must be authorized by the employee's supervisor in advance. The reasonable and necessary expenses for the employee to attend the workshop or conference will be paid for from the authorizing department's budget subject to contribution. I think that's it. Yeah. Here. This is uh, on my version number nine under professional development, page 39. It's easier for me to pass the computer around and figure out where the heck it Okay. Section five, leave benefits, subsection N. Professional development, yeah. 31 in mind, but 37. And 39 in mind, but if that gets you close. If you get to the 30s, I'll look for yeah. an end. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let me answer this. That's a Yeah, that's it. 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 Need to do on that. Uh, all right, so then other than reaching back out to the other departments for a reminder, are we good on the policies? Yeah, just on that answer, Trisha, that you gave to the library, did they actually get your answer? No, I wanted you to see as well. Yeah, so then we should refer them to that section yeah, end that we just looked at for the second question about reimbursement for you know, conferences and conference and travel expenses. Um, so I had made some other comments that were just wordsmithing and stuff that I should have 
probably, but I didn't have the time but That's we smart, yeah. to tie them up and just send them to you. There's nothing major, but I think you can be pulled or result of the whole thing. I'll type them up now that I'm more acclimated to my duties <laughs> and send them to you. Because I think when we met before, I think it was day, day, day one. Two days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is a lot, and this is probably five so, percent uh, of your new job. So, um, so I'll do that and get them out to you probably this week. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is to review and discuss the second draft of the FY twenty four. Well, it's. Thank you for the. I guess my first question, since I'm first looking at it, is which what do we have known for known changes? Probably was it the community development was one that I think we are looking to be more traditional. Is that? Yes, that I did. I don't remember seeing it. That was one that we were trying to reach, and we were going to look at the fur god or something. Um, what you sent, yeah, ever that was, yeah, yeah, community, yeah, this, is that, yeah, that's it. No, oh, well, it's on the video. Yeah, but it's all blanks. That's why I went to this one. Yeah, the one that oh, I, this is know. the one that you sent on Wednesday, I think, of last mm -hmm. week. Or, well, this one. No, I did a supplemental one with water. Animal inspector and looks like you don't have it, right? This know. is what the it's, most recent one yeah. I have from you, and this is you got, yeah, that's what got blown up. Right. Just as yeah, I blew it up, so I, did, I think this is the same. I did some additional stuff off the oh. um, fur cob one, so let me go print it. All right. So what is the one dated three updated three twenty one? Is that this is the one I printed? What's that one? I probably sent you the wrong one. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, these are what. Yeah, you, no, that's good that they have that. There was okay. another one that I, right. I, I I might have sent you. There were two. Okay, I'll just for the yeah, no okay. awesome. Or if you send it, I can put it up on the projector. Yeah, because otherwise Joyce won't be able to have an income. Yeah. When are you actually retiring? It's like a shocker to me. Yeah, that. Do. A doctor, um, yeah. The earliest I can retire at full full benefits is in May of twenty five. Oh, um, sorry. so it's not tomorrow, but. <laughs> So you're counting the days? Down the road. Down the road. Just, just over a year. Aware that the, the town clerk is no longer there's now a salad uh, contract. You mean the, Do they all know that? No, you mean not the clerk, treasurer, um, treasurer, treasurer clerk. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I haven't been announced, but just here. I mean, we we made a we were in using that. That was one of the ones in our comparison previously, but now. That's been negotiated with the select board in this contract. Yeah. We're being recorded, right? Yes. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> Before I ask questions. <laughs> <laughs>
the mic's so good at the front. Sorry, we can hear a It'll be good for night time. The, the one of the hopes is the ice skating rink that has been being put up at the fire station so it'll be will go down on the pavement. Oh. And it'll be a better yeah. scenario, better setup. Yeah. And especially at, in the winter hours when it's dark at 4 30, 5 o'clock, people will be able to turn the lights on and skate. Will they be timed during the, the winter time? The, the way they operate, that the lights that come on for the parking lot are only on a manual timer so that they, the maximum they can be on is one hour and they'll shut off on their own. Doesn't mean, but if somebody can go back and turn them up, reset them and turn them on again. But the, the good thing is that someone can't leave the and have on. them stay on all night. Yeah. The other lights that face towards the field and pavilion are on two separate switches depending on what's necessary. Very, very helpful, even in many of the summer events when there's baseball games that are just finishing up and it's getting dark out or soccer season where it starts to get darker earlier. This is what she was referring to. She was saying to do it? Ah, uh, yes. Thanks. I just had her do it. Yeah. You want to look out? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. What's that in Thanks. See that, Joyce? <laughs> <laughs> X-ray. Oh, sorry. I was I was reading the salary survey here. <laughs> Did you get the email from Trisha Joyce with the attachment? Uh, there was um, uh, an email from Trisha back on the uh, 27th of February that had two FERCOG uh, salary surveys, a regional and a municipal one. So she should those do are that right. in Excel. Um, I just said yeah. another one, George. Oh, okay. All right. To your Smith email. So yep. I think that's what she was referring when I looked at this and noticed the gaps, I went and I looked at the Kirkhog, and it's a challenge because there's not a number of people in the valley that have these, but except for animal inspector. Um, but um, in terms of essential functions and duties, not a hundred percent, but similar. Just to you know, again, and I had said. It wasn't apples to apples, a little apples to oranges, but, um, and the, some of the towns are obviously bigger, but it at least gives you some frame of reference if you're in the ballpark um, for the rates. Um, and water superintendent is just impossible, really. Yeah. Um, but, and Keith, you know more about this than I in terms of, but a chief operator for a wastewater treatment plant versus a water superintendent with the licenses and things like that can be arguably somewhat comparable. Correct. I would say on a wage and classification plan, they would be um, pretty much classified along the same, depending on the number of staff and size that they have of the operation. So again, I just did this to give you a little more information since on the uh, survey that we had, there were so many gaps to try to even make a meaningful Stab in the dark about it. And then the animal inspector, given that we don't have one as of July 1, um, I think the information there is very compelling um, in terms of why we're losing our incumbent. Yeah, I agree to that. You can look at the animal inspector. And, uh, I mean, certainly Holly and Leverett at 100 each is exceptionally different, but even us at 460 is not. And most towns, 
the animal control officer is often the animal inspector as well. This is only the animal inspector. So if we um, coupled it with the animal control officer salary, the salaries are really much higher, but I think I only wanted to do that for animal inspector since we just won the sheriff's um, yeah. the regional, right? Sure. I bring the regional sheriff's county, right? I forgot what he said. That's a, a budgetary discussion for the select board. So the animal inspector is still re going to remain. It was. Yeah, the sheriff doesn't cover it. Right. Okay. And our current income is agreed to stay through June 30th as courtesy. Okay. So it will be vacant as of July 1st. Yes. Yeah. All right. Do we want to? Start with the, the first one, which was we just discussed a community development director. And we feel this new information warrants any changes. <coughs> Previously, all we had was just what Waitley pays, and that was it. Okay. And I'm having trouble finding that spreadsheet uh, that has like our towns, the one with the, the the columns that doesn't fit on one screen anyway. I could send that to you, Joyce. But do you happen to have a friend? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, um, uh, like what is the number for comparison with Waitley? As I'm looking at the spreadsheet I just got that has, you know, Greenfield, Montague, Montague, mm -hmm. Orange, Deerfield, and Deerfield. Waitley, the only thing I can say is Waitley is on a salary line of 53,909.66. Okay. Right. So if I'm reading this right, the rates of the other towns, but we don't know how many hours a week, well, in some cases we do. Yeah. I say we're less than if I do 42. I just ran the, ran the average and it's 40, 4187 for. But these mm -hmm. these three towns here are four three or four times the size right. of yeah. um, yeah. Waitley, and those are full time positions where Sylvie's not how many hours a week. I thought she was around thirty something. I thought I thought she was full time. I thought she's either thirty five or forty because she works Monday through she works Sunday right. through or yeah. Thursday. I don't know. You know what? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, without knowing her hours, it's tough to put that into an hourly context. Yeah, because if, if Greenfield Planner, is that comparable to the Yeah, okay, they're not comparable well, across job yeah. categories, so that's why you can't just take 42 times 40 times. Yeah. yeah. I guess we can't really weigh in until we know how many hours a week she works because we can't even I'm, compare. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure when we hired Hannah, it was a full time job. What thirty? Uh, it comes out to thirty nine forty five. She's doing thirty hours, so we. You're right. We need to. If these are hourly. And we're not talking 40 hours versus 10 hours. How relevant is the number of hours to our calculation? If it's relevant for budgeting and finance, but if we're trying to be comparable on an hourly basis, do we need to consider the hours? I don't know. She's making 54 and she's working 20 hours a week. That 
that's something we should look at. That's, that's, that's way above average. Right. That, that we should be in line, but that requires us to know how many hours a week the job description is. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to make a decision without knowing the number of hours, and I can't believe that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I really thought it was full time, but if it's really four days a week, then that's uh, oh, thirty-two, right? Yeah, yeah, right. But right. it's a different job, and yeah, so, field and it's here. But I'm just right. doing in my head forty-two times forty times fifty or whatever the number of weeks. Like, yeah, that's. I think we need to know what what she's working. That's fine. All right, well then that's a hold, I guess. Yeah, we'll have to hold off on that before we can make any further discussions. As far as the, the water slash the water superintendent, that was one of the positions that the water commissioners do on their own. And did that last year after Tom, you know, after we had already submitted it anyway. So that one's a new point. Which leaves the animal inspector. What we want to do with that. The average for these towns, including the two that are at 100, is 978. That's what I get. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I think we should take out the, those two low ones because they're really, um, they're aberrations. Yeah, agreed. Okay. So that brings us to 1153. Um, for the community development administrator position, we advertised as a 40 hour per week and fully benefit position. So I'm pretty sure it's full time. I don't know. Somebody wants to confirm that, but we did advertise it as that. I'm yeah, that's what I'm remembering. But yeah. I, I don't know what the, I mean. Wasn't there for the hire, so maybe there was some negotiation, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, but that I think. Time though, it's forty yeah. hours. Pretty sure that's twenty five ninety one an hour. That's fifty three nine hundred. And that sounds. Correct to me. That 25 rate sounds correct. Which then becomes very obvious that it's fairly low. Yeah. Compared compare to the average yeah. of these other jobs. But again, at the same it. point in time, like the, the bigger communities like the Montagues and the Greenfields that we can't, but we should be able to bring it up. I don't know, say it, geez, uh, like $10 an hour, but. You know, Go from twenty five ninety to thirty five ninety. It's still well. The other anything else there? Well, orange has thirty three. And it seems like a big jump for right. the town to absorb. absorb. Mm -hmm. More than we did over two years. Five. Yeah. Yeah, and also we're talking about different jobs. I'm just learning on the job here. Can you read what when you said what we advertised the rate at? What the job description is? Because yeah. I'm just trying to compare it. Greenfield and Waitley is a whole yeah. world. Of yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, I clicked out. But if you give me a moment, I'm. Um, yeah. Well, well maybe you guys know. Well, what's, just a year. He started when I started. So that was back in July. Yeah, so the advertising was in March. Yes. And <clears throat> duties include provides technical expertise to the planning board and zoning board um, to ensure effective planning and management, development, and use development, assist the planning board in the development and implementation of amendments. To the town zoning bylaws and other land use regulations, engages in long range planning activities to ensure that local plans are up to date, works collaboratively with various boards and committee, committees to develop and submit grant applications, independently manages community development projects, and provides general administrative support to the town administrator. 
attendance at evening meetings, other boards and committees required. The ideal candidate will have a bachelor's degree and and then minimum of three years work experience of municipal or equivalent. And then it says the position 40 hours, fully benefited, and then starting annual pay is 51099. And that was in March of 2023. Shouldn't we talk to either the planning board or the zoning board, two boards that I've never in interacted with here, or so whoever she's primarily reporting to besides the town administrator? I guess we can't quite ask you yet, Tricia, but I just don't have a good handle on how big the job is in a town of 1,600 people. It might be just as big as in Greenfield in a different way. I just don't. Do you have any thoughts on that, given your years of municipal and lately experience? No, it's certainly different. I mean, I, I have to admit, I didn't know she was working 40 hours. So, um, but what the rate she's making now is higher than the starting average, the starting range, right? Well, yes, that is correct. But it translates, if if she's doing the 40 hours, it translates to twenty five ninety one an hour. Wow. Who, who would she, would she have directly answered to Brian before? Yes. yes. So she's uh, the assistant town administrator, technically. Maybe well. that's the answer is to reach out to Brian, which we can do. Yeah, we can reach, we can. Well, yeah. good. That's a good idea. Is there a separate salary for the assistant? No, nope, they are combined positions. Yeah, so can't really compare it to Greenfield. It's a totally different yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I was the one comparing it to Greenfield. I'm just but yeah, telling yeah. myself that. Yeah. That explains why it's a 40 hour job. Yeah, I think a lot of what, I mean, uh, a lot of what our assistant town administrator does, and maybe because I don't see what the planning board and zoning board are doing on a daily basis, has been getting us grants. There's a, and then, so when uh, she's interfacing with the select board, it's often uh, getting our input on what, uh, which grant applications we should apply for. Um, and uh, you know, she goes out and finds information and brings it back and and uh, sometimes recommends some grants for us to think about. Um, but she does like all of the the real work involved in getting grants. Um, and she does a, 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 a her, I mean part of her job is get input from um, boards and committees, especially the select board on grants. So that, I mean that's the part of her job that I see the most. Um, and I know there's other support for these boards who need a lot more technical expertise. Joyce, um, can I just and I don't know how that compares with a planner in Deerfield, for example. I don't really know what the assistant town administrator in Deerfield does either. Um, so that's, yeah. Anyways, I guess I'm, I'm trying to kind of support your point there that uh, um, we might need more information. And Joyce, can I just ask, when I first came on the finance committee about three years ago and COVID had just begun or it was one year in and we lost our grant writer, who I never met, but she went to Somerville because she could work remotely and make a lot more money. And that was a thing that we really wrung our hands about how are we going to make up for that? Was that the community development Position was that yes. the same? Oh, yes, yes, that was exactly. Oh, okay. okay, then yeah, it's that's a big, a broader, yeah. Okay, if a grant writing is part of it, we really ought to look and make sure we're compensating fairly because we don't want to lose someone who's looking for money for us, right? However, no. we oh, and taking care of all the other crap that goes with it. I mean, it was I, sorry, I shouldn't use the crap <laughs> word, but but you know, after. You, you, like there's all there's been all kinds of follow through. I mean, the our, our first community development coordinator uh, got us this great grant for solar, but the new one has been having to you know, deal with all the you know, pushing it forward and uh, and getting things to work. And and I think last meeting asking for an extension because we're not going to get it done in time and so on. So um, so there's there is a lot of work there in in that. And you're right, we lost our first one because. 
Yeah, exactly from what you said. Right. We can't, you know, we're not in a position that can compete with some of those. So yeah. Well, we want to try to remain somewhat competitive. And so, so how do we want to leave it? Do we want to, do we just want to reach out to Brian? Is that where thoughts? See what he has? Yeah, I would, about? I would think so. Because when I read community I development, I'm no grant writer, but if it's grant writer, that's something we don't want to lose again. I guess. If he's open to being approached with questions, this is a good one for him because he worked directly with us. Good. Okay. All right. So that brings us back to the animal inspector. We sort of were on uh, that. What did you come up with? If we take out those two hundreds and we take the average, we get eleven fifty three fifty. Yeah. Um, which seems like you know, Northfield and Colerain clearly are the leaders there. If you want to be an animal inspector, you got to move there. But, <laughs> but maybe they get more. Out of yeah. Right. Um, but it puts us on par with Gill and Charlotte if we were to go for like 1150 or something like that. Um, and it might, we might actually, it might be fair compensation. It's basically triple. If we take out the two hundreds there for Leverett and Holly, which I don't really know how many animals they would have to inspect there. Um, it would, I mean, but it's, it's going to look like, oh, this this is a 300% increase in a salary, um, but it's such a small salary. I think that's not going to be a real issue. Um, not just not really 300, it's like two and a half times roughly. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, if, if that would get us an animal inspector, I think that would be a, a reasonable place to start. It's kind of in the middle. It's not jumping way to like i would imagine deerfield has many many more animals to inspect um is the real is the right ratio one half which is kind of what i'm proposing i don't know but that's a place to start i mean another way to look at this and you were touching upon this joyce is what do we need to do to recruit right we, we are competing with these numbers the same person will, you know, can be applying. So we need to have a number that keeps us, as you said, in the yeah. running. So I'm supporting it as well. Yeah. Do, does it have to be a person who lives in town, though? Because if, I mean, maybe Deerfield's animal inspector would be willing for an extra, I don't know, 1150 to be Waitley's animal inspector, too. I don't know what that requirement is. Mm -hmm. So I just have one correction on that. Deerfield is not 2200. Deerfield didn't respond. It's Conway. That's 2200. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're just looking at my oh, okay. Name. So change the name to Conway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Con uh, Deerfield apparently shares, but they didn't report. They share their animal control, but they didn't report yeah. for uh, animal inspection. Do we know who? We don't know who they share No, with. it says. And no, that's just for animal control and dog officer. It says Deerfield, Greenfield, oh, and, Montague, and or animal shared. Yeah, animal, not, not, nobody shares for animal inspector. Okay. I'm, so then the question is does, does the animal inspector have to reside in Whiteley? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Yeah, I don't see a reason what it would happen. But Which would mean, in my opinion, we should be able to entice one of the current panel inspectors in the neighboring communities to come to Whaley for an extra 1150, maybe. Right. You know, how, how many hours is the position? Well, no, anything okay. right there. Well, it's, it's all about livestock. Yeah. So Whaley has more livestock than, let's say, I know. <laughs> um, 
And that's so it's a little more labor intensive than some other treatments. I was informed when I spoke with her. Well, that makes sense. I, I well, I I guess my suggestion is we we know we're gonna we need to probably revisit the community development director for that position. Can we try to get some more information as to whether residency is a requirement or can we get a little more information? I mean, if you're talking to Brian, could you just throw that in as a throw? Yeah, I have thoughts about it. I can throw that out, but I, I don't think residency is a requirement for Ann Hall. Yeah. Yeah. No well, way. then I guess the question I have is why aren't more communities sharing, you know, why are That's it. it, it because you don't do it every day. It's not right. It's just a you know very sporadic amount of it's a once a year mm -hmm. thing where he wow. has to come yeah. in and inspect the animals at your farm. I know that much. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like yeah, it sounds like Deerfield is sharing one, um, and I don't know. I mean, maybe you don't have to necessarily have a formal sharing agreement. I mean, this can't be a full time job, right? No, Deerfield, be... Deerfield is sharing their animal control choice, not animal inspector. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah. So. But you may not have the expertise on this committee to know, like, roughly how much more livestock is there in Waitley compared to other towns. Um, is there somebody, obvious we could reach out to who, you know, a farmer who has livestock in the community and who might be able to give us some idea? Does he have to go to the auction house every Tuesday? Because they have new animals all the time. Mm. I don't, I don't think I don't so. Know. I think I it's only for... No, yeah, for the animal inspector's responsible for quarantining for any bites. And it varies by community depending on how many barns and livestock there is. And they have to file the report with the state. And so they have to visit all those barns annually. So if you think of the number and, and file that report, and must ensure that all animals, domestic or wild, are tested for rabies. So they're all responsible for that. And um, it says in the statute it could be a light task or a lengthy one, because um, they have to also make sure they're in good health. Um, and check tag numbers for cattle and things like that. But there is no residency requirement. And it's possible that the same person is working for multiple towns. It's just not agreed right. upon between yeah, because, towns yeah. for sharing. <laughs> that you know, Joe is in Conway on Tuesday and in Shelburne on Thursday, just making his rounds. Yeah, I, I'm not pushing this back on Brian, but if you're having a conversation or an email with him, if he has one minute to spend on it, it might be good to get his insight because he's got both history and great talent in, in which is another reason why residency is not a requirement i think we reach out to some of these neighboring communities and say we're we're up to 11 1150 roughly to, to to take care of our needs i wonder if lynn knows about this this is for this to help yeah yeah i mean rick i just don't know what he he was doing it, and I just don't know what it entailed. Yeah. And then Lynn might, might have dealt with. Yeah. Or she might know the right farmer to call and just ask, right? About kind of because the, the, the farmers just have to know what's going on in the other towns and who's got what. Um, I mean, all, all we really need is like if we were to ask, like, you know, compared to Conway. Do we have that many animals compared to Conway or compared to some of these other towns that are nearby? You know. Yeah, so that, the other issue that's kind of what we need. It's a stipend. So the person who has the job 
as a career. So the work was performed on the weekends. It's normally done when the state book, it enhances the state report needed to be done, which is in the spring. So this individual's weekends were taken up over a series of several couple months mm -hmm. because of the volume. He's done it for many, many years. Right? Yeah, he has. It yeah. Is, you know, without, without, for, without talking to him, I mean, do we have a, an up to date paper trail as far as the new person to even know where to go? Who to, what farms, who has the animals? Yeah, I'm sure he'd be able to do to all provide that. Provide all that information. Yeah. All right, so um, all right, well, I think we're at the end of that section, unless anybody else has any other views. Right, the next item is to review and discuss and vote an FY25 COLA and recommendations. First question is, do we have any new da data from any other communities? Lynn added, this should reflect anything that would have been added between when you saw it before and yes. now. Lynn updated it, I think. Yes, yes this is the ones in blue. Edited are the edited versions. I don't no, we're new. I don't know what Lynn, what were the edits that Lynn did. I yeah, just, she didn't have it. Okay, I know she, whatever came up, she updated last year. That's none of that's calls. No, it was just if she got additional salary information. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't think I have that Excel sheet. Um, I yeah, sent the one that you're on, unfolding now in front of you. Is that something? That's what just said. That was Sweet. sent. Yeah, but it's not cola. We don't have. I don't no. think we've been. No, I don't think I've seen anything, anything on cola. This was nothing. just Lynn's edits that I had sent. From, oh. Um, for her, for her uh, request. Okay, so because I, I got a, I don't have an Excel file on anything I got from you this week. Mm -hmm. I sent it last week. It was with the agenda, right? Yep, I sent it along with the agenda. Oh, because the, the, the personnel committee meeting materials email only has a Word file. It doesn't have. Yep, that was a, an, an additional file. email I sent after the original email. Um, I'm still not finding an Excel file. It says oh, uh, personnel yes. material yes. meeting. Meeting materials four one twenty three sent on the twenty seventh, and uh, last Wednesday. Just and then there was yeah, there were both last Wednesday. It was on Wednesday three twenty seven is when I sent it. You should have two. Um, the first email you should have three word documents and one Excel file. The agenda, the bylaw comments, the salary survey, which is what we're referring to now, and then the minutes right. from real life. Um, the salary survey I have it was from February. I don't, I've only got one email from you on last Wednesday. The subject line says personnel committee meeting materials for one twenty four, um, and it says there are two attachments. But oh no, hold yeah, on, hold on. There's found, found it. Thank you. And that says updated 321. Yes. Yeah. So that's the yeah, yeah. 321. Got yeah. it. Okay. Thank good. you. Thank You're you great. for your patience. A lot of times what we hand. what we look at is some of the information on what other area towns are recommending. Um, we also look at the, the Northeast CPI and the New England CPI. Uh, when we first met, 
we had, I wrote down here, we have the Northeast at two and a half and the New England was at two. Other factors are, um, we have been, we're aware that the health insurance is seeing an 8% increase to their employees. Um, the other thing that I had pointed out and I wanted to add to the meeting, which was the last time, was the fact that the necessary income to afford the median house in Waitley and the, that hour, you know, what you need to make to live in Waitley. And the point I wanted to drive home is that <clears throat> we are expecting some of our employees to reside in Waitley and certainly prefer our employees to live in Waitley, especially like in the highway department for response time and not live a half an hour away. And if they, if our employees can't live in Waitley, I can't afford to live in Waitley on what we're paying them, I feel that that's, there's a problem there. So I just wanted to point that out in our discussion on what we choose to recommend. Mm -hmm. Done. I was like, do we know what we gave last year? Because I seem to recall it was a few points lower than the CPI was in the end. Because the higher than what the finance committee yeah. wanted to do. So yes. that's <laughs> always the drill. Yeah. In my three vast years of you you are correct. I didn't bring that number, but it was the CPI was very high, like it's like five. It was higher. It was almost nine. It was eight something. The cola was five. Our our cola was in the five. Yes. Yeah. And that was met with much resistance. But I, it's really hard to say without a comparison of the local towns, both generally and the finance committee. I think that's yes. However, the one thing that we can look at is even though you, we did that high cola, it didn't put us in the situation where all of our positions were above average we were still having to make adjustments for people that are still below so it's not like by doing that it put us at the top of the pay scale that's a really good point so it's it, if we had only done a three percent last year we would have been really way behind them making a lot of adjustments Oh, I you so, are preaching to the choir, but right. you I'm know just, what the counter response to that is. I'm, yeah, and I'm just pointing that out as well that I didn't put us hey. out of line. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the CPI uh, page right here, and last year around this time, the CPI they they have one that includes uh, all items and one that's I less food and energy, and I'll just do the all items uh, number for simplicity. But February 2023 was 5.9. March 2023 was 4.3. January and December and November and October were all uh, over six. Um, so it was starting to go down. Um, and the other discussion item, the they were talking about how the fur cog wasn't doing a big uh, uh, cola that particular year, uh, but they had done six percent the previous year. So that was uh, um, that was part of the part of the mix. Mm -hmm. But I think we had got them to three or three and a half, and we realized that was as far as we were going to get them, and that uh, so that's where we stopped. And I read. I remember one other thing that happened mid-year last year was the Franklin County Retirement came back to all its member communities and they did a midterm. Remember that, Joyce? I yeah, the yeah, they had an adjustment. The select board had to approve that because they realized that they needed to do a mid, they did actually two colas last year. Yeah, so I, I've got the current CPI uh, numbers up here. Uh, if we're looking at the the all items, the numbers are like uh, December 2.6, January 2.5, February 
Uh, if you take out food and energy, it's 3.5, 3.5, and 3.2. Um, and I don't know that there's a good reason to uh, take away food and energy out of the cost of living. It just means that those things aren't rising as fast as things like medicine and clothing and I guess other things like that. Is that so, national, regional? No, this is the Northeast region. Sorry, I should have said that up front. Um, I don't see a specific New England one. I wasn't able to um, find that, but just there's, I find in the Northeast. Here we, oh, here we go. CPI, Boston, Cambridge, Newton. I think that might be the other one that we uh, look at. That one looks very similar. Uh, it might be a, a tiny bit lower. Um, like it's looking like, uh, oh, here's the chart data. Hold on. Um, it's more like uh, 2.6 to, oh, these, oh, this is the does up to date. This only goes to January. They don't have it up for the January 2024, but it's 2.0 and 3.0 instead of, you know, two and a little, three and a little. Can we get information on what the other towns are doing? Yeah, you know, right. The, the one thing that I know, I remember that both ways, though. I mean, yeah, exactly. Except for that, I don't know what we're going to say about Paul. The, the Paul, I remember him asking, like at the finance committee meeting, I came to somebody what they were getting for a call. And just keep in mind that. You've got to remember the communities that you're you're comparing to COLA that might be also having the step increases that when you I know like Deerfield, pretty much everybody there is going to get a step increase on top of their COLA. So that you gotta you gotta look at the big picture. Whereas because Waitley doesn't have that in place at yeah. the moment, we have to keep keep that in mind. <laughs> So for collecting information on calls from other towns, that would be another question to ask is do is there another increase such as a step increase? Step increase and what the percentage in between the step. Well, that's going to vary for every position in every yeah. step, but I think it's an important point. But given that you're looking at recommending five or six, five positions with some more than one person in some of the positions, for adjustments to the median at a minimum, it begs the question of trying to get that wage you class done and not having. I know. Because some positions might be redlined and not get a COLA, and others would have a step and be able to deal with the position too, in addition to them. Because if everybody's at the mid, then they're making an appropriate wage for the work that they're doing. And then you can really look at a true COLA. Right. Do we know where that stands with the select board as far as getting the wage and classification study done? Joyce, you have no update on that, right? I, I, uh, I, I know we have to appropriate some money for it. I don't know that there's going to be a special town meeting before annual town meeting. Um, but Tricia may know more about that. Uh, yeah. I know there was some talk of maybe having a, a special town meeting, but that was back in January when Brian was still with us. Um, to, but I think that would, that's definitely something that we would have in place for next year. But yeah, we have to we have to appropriate the money for it. Okay, so then at the very least, would that be an ATM? At the annual town meeting appropriation. I, I certainly want it to be if it's unless we can get it sooner, then that would be nice. But I, I don't think we're going to get it sooner. Right. So that's why I'm just making a note. Yeah. I see Trish writing that it gets added to. <laughs> it's tomorrow's take care. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nope. Happy to do it. All right. Okay. So then. 
I know the finance committee wants this wants this number. How long can we? Hold you know, off? I think CPI is three percent. We were low last year at three percent. I guess the higher of the two CPI numbers is three percent. I think we could justify three percent again. Um, and that would still well, be kind of low. Um, yeah, I don't I think, think we can find a whole lot of other towns doing more than 3% or committing to it at this point. I would then say... You I'm know, just throwing that, that out there. Okay. I would say, you know, with that 3% going along with the fact that the, the fact that the cost of living to own a house and live in Waitley is higher than a lot of the other communities around here, that 3% is justified. I would go with that. I mean, to me, it's low. So I would go with that if that's the consensus without getting other data, which it sounds like we may not have before town meeting. Yeah, to me, three is the minimum. Yeah, that's the yeah. That's how I feel. Okay, okay. if we can get Somebody some want to make a motion then, and we'll just go with that? Uh, I make a motion to recommend a 3% COLA to the Board of Selectmen. To the Thank Board you. of Finance, Finance Committee. Oh, sorry, to the Finance Committee, excuse me, right? Well, <laughs> I'm not skipping over my own committee. <laughs> finance Committee. Finance Committee and the Select Board. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I have a motion made and seconded to recommend a 3% COLA. Any other discussions? If not, I'll do a roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Susan? Aye. Brenda? Aye. And myself? Aye. Okay. Um, next item. Is there any any unanticipated items? Hearing none. Um, our next meeting date. The only thing we'll need to do is to see if we can get some more information on those two of those positions and any other department heads. And finalize the bylaws. Yeah. That's what right. I'm fine if there's any other oh, department the heads. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about their salary. No, okay. if any other department heads respond to the, to our um, salary, I mean, our personnel policy. Now we'll get all the answers to your questions. <laughs> Maybe one more meeting. I would almost, you know, the minimum of two, if not three weeks out. Can't on the 15th, but I, not that we're two to on the 22nd. 22nd? I would say tentatively, yes, because I can have access to my calendar. It's Passover, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, well, that's all right. Yeah, so. the 29th, which is the next Monday. Is that too late? No. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Well, the last meeting of the finance team is on the 23rd. Oh, yes. All right, so we really should try to meet before that. I can try to do it remotely on the 15th, if that's better. Or another day, but you have yeah. so you have night meetings on. The only yeah. other thing that no, I don't know if it's a, an issue and wouldn't bother me, but it's a holiday. Town meeting on the holiday, it, but you it, can't vote. Oh, is it Patriots Day? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a state holiday, so we wouldn't be able to make any votes. No. You All can right. meet, but you can't vote. Well, I then, think there's a finance on the 14th. Is that right? Yeah. So every Tuesday at night, it's. Either select board or finance or both. Yeah. We have the sixteenth and the twenty third is the joint select board and finance meeting. So that go to two days. Yeah, sixteenth. The seventeenth, the Wednesday. I don't know if that that says up. Should be fine. Betty has the fine. Seventeenth. I could do that. I just work a different shift. Sure. All right. I'm going to the same thing. 5 p.m. 17th, 5 p.m. 17th, Joyce. Okay. That's a Wednesday. 
Yep, yeah, that's fine. I think it's like Patriots Day or something like that. Yeah. Okay. We're done with that. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Susan? Aye. Brenda? Aye. And myself, aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, team.